Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show with me, author of a Recruiter Guy's Guide to Finding a Job, Recruiter Guy Bill Humbert. Happy Miner's Day, Joe. Happy Miner's Day to you. Are you a miner? Uh, no. We're all miners on Miner's uh, Day, are we? Well, I'm my candidates, so yeah. There, yeah, you do. <laughs> you do a little job mining, too. I do. Yeah, yeah. a little worker mining. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you know, it, it's Labor Day, and I, as I've said, no one knows more about Labor Day than the Recruiter Guy. Well, that's right. <laughs> I know an awful lot about Labor Day. Excellent. Well, one of the things that's kind of interesting in Utah, I found, is it seems to be the hub of call centers everywhere. If you've got a call center, you're definitely going to have one in Utah, unless you're not a big enough company. Most big companies have them here. So uh, that's kind of an interesting thing, because when you're starting one of those up, it means you have to hire a whole lot of people. Exactly. That can be challenging. It can be very, very challenging, yes. You know, and, call, and the reason why uh, Utah has so many call centers is the accent is very neutral. Yeah. And that way, um, people calling in from all over the United States or, you, you know, possibly even other places in the world that are English-speaking countries can call in and get a neutral um, accent. Right. And as long not, as they don't have to say Leighton, yeah. everything's fine. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Minus that, you know, if they say, well, where do you live? I live in front of the mountains. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, we have a neutral accent. Exactly. And we speak a lot of languages, and that's another thing that's helpful. That's true. That's, you know, that's really one of the high points for uh, Utah is the stress that's been put on foreign language education here. Right. So for a call center, it's perfect. It makes lots of sense. But the thing is, as we mentioned, it's a daunting task to look at hiring lots of people at once. So tell me a little bit about the process that goes there. And there's some tips that we're going to talk about as well. To That's right. This. You know, first of all, you have to have an overriding attitude about right. people. This is something we do with everything we do. That's right? correct. And secondly, you know, you need to be able to um, understand what kind of uh, employment market that you're in so that you can attract the people. So the first tip that we have for hiring yeah. um, a large number of people in high volume recruiting is to make sure that you have the talent base. Right. And uh, if the positions are going to be uh, anything more or if they are going to be entry level. Determining right. Determining that. For That's sure. right. Yes. Uh, I did a recruiting project for MCI back in the early 90s. And we, we were transitioning an IT organization from Pentagon City, Virginia, where there was tons of talent, to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where MCI was one of three data centers with large mainframes, IBM mainframes. And that meant that we had to recruit people from all over the United States. And in that process, what you had was an expensive reload for all of those. Right. So the nice thing about Utah is we, we have a nice, broad, talented, educated base of candidates to draw from if you're going to do high volume type recruiting. Makes good sense. All right, number two. This one is about having a value proposition for those employees, especially, and the, the, this is if you're going to try to maybe steal a few trained ones away from other, other companies. Yeah, and, tr and stealing the trained ones are kind of my specialty. That's what I like to do. But you're right, you know, you- Well, poaching. You, you, poaching, yeah, uh, borrowing. Is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Might be long-term borrowing, kind of like library, but you know. What, yeah. Yeah. So um, it's important to have a reason for those people to want to to move to your company. You know, it could be culture. It could be money. Best not money, but culture's better. Um, it could be benefits. Somehow there has to be a combination of reasons for a person to want to to move who already is experienced and think they're happy somewhere else. And so what I like to do is take somebody who thinks they're happy somewhere and then make them realize how unhappy they are and how happy they'd be with my client. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that's interesting that I think kind of runs both when you're hiring people or when you're actually out just trying to get people to buy your product or whatever the case is, that you have to have a marketing strategy. Otherwise, people look at you as just any other thing. It doesn't matter to them. It's not something, it doesn't give them any kind of a call to action or any of that. So you have to have a marketing plan. That's tip number three for going out and seeking new employees. Exactly, Joe. You know, what's really important is that you first of all have an entire recruiting strategy. And then within that recruiting strategy, you develop a marketing strategy. And, you know, recruiting is a sales process. Right. And so if you, develop a marketing strategy. It could include your website. 
you know, usually the corporate website is owned by marketing in, within the company. And so uh, you'll see careers in, you know, like two point font at the bottom. <laughs> um, maybe now you'd want to have something that's up higher in the website that attracts people's attention. Because somebody who's coming to your website is usually coming for a reason. They want, they like your company, they're interested in your company, they like your product. And so give them an opportunity to maybe go to work for you. Um, you can also, you know, there's some old school ways of th doing things. You can also go to uh, the newspaper and maybe put a, uh, an ad, um, not one of the little column ads, but a display right. ad in maybe the business section or maybe in um, um, sports, depending on the age of the people that you're looking for, somewhere that would attract them. Um, run spots on the radio, drive time spots. Um, advertise here at Park City TV. That's right, <laughs> absolutely. You know, if it's local people that you're trying to attract, remember everybody knows 250 people, at least. Yeah. Um, and so use whatever you can that makes sense for the number of people that you're trying to hire and market those positions. Well, another part of that too, as you said, that's a really an overall strategy, right? Right. And then we sort of broke that down a little bit. One of the important things to do is if you're going to send out a call of action like that and invite many people to show up, you better know how to process them very, very quickly. So you've got to figure out how to be efficient. And being efficient in an interview process is not something a lot of people are really good at individually. It's even bigger when you're talking about a company. So tell us why that's important. Well, you know, this, this is another one of those tips. It, it, you have to be able to process those candidates that are interested. Because I'm going to tell you, there's four more companies looking for them too. Right. And if you've got their interest up, now it's very important to keep their interest at a high level. And part of the way you do that is learn from Disney World. You create a little path for them to follow that's not um, difficult to follow, but keeps their interest. And for instance, if you're going to have an open house at your facility, then possibly you have a food station. Possibly you have uh, an area where you're actually doing a little bit of screening with them to make sure they're talking to the right managers. You have managers right. there to interview them for 10 minutes to get a basic, am I interested in this person or not? So that way you're actually getting out there, you're gaining their interest, you're talking about their culture, you've got a little fruit, something for them to nibble on while they're right. waiting, cup of soda, water, doesn't matter. Um, and then when they meet the, the manager, the manager spends a couple of minutes selling the company, selling the position, the potential of uh, growth within the position, and then they can go and be interested. And you know, the next step is going to be, we'll get you in for an interview, or we'll, you know, right, moving through a process. And that's an important part of this. So let's break it down a little more, even too. We we know that there's obviously going to be some identification of people who we are not going to continue to interview. There's going to be a, a kind of a group probably that is, you know, yes, they'll be, you know, they'll be here. They're going to be a good worker. We definitely want to look at interviewing them further. And then we have, hey, there's somebody with leadership potential. Here's somebody that we, 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 want, to, we want to go after them actively. And so that's part of this too, isn't it? Setting it up and having a process of these are the people who are going to interview that next step. That's right, Joe. You know, there's even another layer of person. And you know, in Utah right now, there's over 100,000 people who are out of work. Many right. of those are professionals. Many of those are baby boomers. Many of those would be great in a call center environment because they're seasoned and they've heard just about everything by now. <laughs> and so sometimes it's good to take um, a call center and you're, of course you're gonna be going after the younger people because typically their expectations for money is a little bit less. But today, there's been a lot of people who've been out of work for a long time. Their expectations for money is also going to be less, and they're going to work hard for you. And um, so that's a third group. But you know, the people you're not interested in, you know, you just um, treat them with respect because they could be a potential client. Right. And um, say, wow, well, you're just not really the kind of person that we're looking for right now. But we're going to keep all of your information in our applicant tracking system. Should something else come up, we'll certainly give you a, a contact and maybe you know, have you come in for an interview. Excellent. Now, let's talk about the other end of that spectrum. The, the person that we know we want. 
and we know we're going to make an offer. And typically, if they're the kind of person that we're talking about here, they're intelligent enough to know that they're going to turn right around and counter offer. And what we want to sort of encourage at this point, because we are trying to get people going quickly here, is we probably want to get through the minutia of that right there. That, you know, and Joe, that's not minutia. <laughs> <laughs> I realize. <laughs> but it is a process, isn't it? It is part of the process, and it's, it's a very important part because why spend all the time that you're spending to get to this point to want to extend an offer to somebody and, and then, then let them walk out the door? And then let them walk out the door and go back home and have that company say, oh, I didn't know you were wanting to leave. Well, I really wasn't. They kind of recruited me or, you know. Right. And well, we'll give you an extra blah, blah, blah. And they go, oh, OK, I'll stay. Right. That's not good for anybody. That's it's not good for them either. Because in the long run, we've already talked about that. That's not a position you want to be in, getting a raise at your company because you might leave. <laughs> you're already out the door at that you point. Are, your loyalty <laughs> is now called into question. Yeah. Um, you're going to start seeing yourself excluded from the important conversations. And usually, you know, 80% of the people within a year are no longer at that company. So let's do everybody a favor and figure out if this person's coming to work for us and get them on the books. Get them on board and talk to them about the counteroffer because the counteroffer really plays to the ego of the candidate. And so if a manager is really good at doing counteroffers, um, what will happen is that person will feel so important when it's all done, they're, they're going to say, well, yeah, I'm going to stay here. And of course, as soon as they accept their counteroffer, then now they start finding themselves excluded from meetings and the rest of the things I was talking about. And right. maybe even the raise might have been next year's raise. And so they, they won't get a raise either. So there's a lot of reasons why people do not stay after, in most cases, there's 20% do. But in most cases, they don't, and a lot of reasons why they don't. And so now you've done two things. You've ruined the relationship with your current company, and you've also ruined the relationship at your potential company. Right. So we got to be very, very careful there. Take care of those people that we're thinking about employing. Exactly. All right. Well, this is an interesting uh, situation. I'm sure there's companies that get involved in this. It, clearly, them, having them involve somebody who does recruiting makes good sense. I think so. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, if people want to get a hold of the Recruiter Guy, find your book, any of that, where do they go? Um, Recruiter Guy is www.recruiterguy.com. Okay, there it is right there. Right there. And the uh, actually the second edition of my book is now on Kindle Excellent. on Amazon. Um, and then if you want to sit in the airplane and, and read this, you can also buy that on Amazon or up here at Dolly's. Excellent. Recruiter Guy, Bill Humbert, as always. Thanks, Fun Joe. to have you on the show. Learning lots about uh, getting uh, new employees for your company, especially if you need to do a whole lot of them right here. All right. We'll be back with more on the Mountain Morning Show in a couple minutes. We're going to be wrapping things up after this.